In December 2015, 195 countries agreed in Paris to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees and strive to limit it close to 1.5 degrees above the pre-industrial temperature level. What does that mean and why was this limit chosen? There is one diagram that explains the main aspects of this and it was published in the scientific journal Nature Climate Change in 2016. If you look at this diagram, you first see at the bottom part a curve showing the global temperature since 20,000 years ago until the present. This can be derived from sediment cores, ice cores and other data sources that tell us about past temperatures. And there you see how temperature has increased from 20,000 years ago, which was the height of the last ice age, into the Holocene that started around about 10,000 years ago. You see fairly stable temperatures during the Holocene. And at the very end, you see an uptick of warming by about one degree that has been caused by human activities, by our greenhouse gas emissions that have increased the amount of carbon dioxide and other gases in the atmosphere to the point of trapping enough heat to stop the long-term slow cooling trend that has to do with the ice age cycles and bring us on a trajectory of rapid warming. In this diagram, you can also see as a gray horizontal bar the so-called Paris range, that is the range between 1.5 and 2 degrees above the pre-industrial temperatures, which are here taken as the kind of 19th century temperatures. Now there's also a number of uh, colorful bars here, and those show the risk of crossing certain thresholds of danger in the climate system, the so-called tipping elements. So let me walk you through some of those tipping elements. So on the left, we have a group of five tipping elements. They involve uh, the West Antarctic ice sheet, the Greenland ice sheet, the alpine glaciers, the summer sea ice cover on the Arctic Ocean, and the coral reefs. And those bars going from yellow to red show the risk of crossing a critical threshold where these systems are endangered of basically making a transition into a totally different state. A tipping point is something like you would know from a kayak. Systems typically resist a major change to some extent, like when you lean over in a kayak a little bit, but then there is a point where this resistance breaks down and the kayak flips. And we have a similar thing with a number of the large scale features of the global climate system. Take the West Antarctic ice sheet, for example. This has a critical point where it becomes unstable. And this is well known, understood physics. It's been understood since uh, the 1970s uh, due to the work of John Mercer. When this ice sheet retreats past certain features in the topography, the, the rock bed under the ice, where it starts to slope backward, then basically it will slide into the sea because there is no holding anymore. And this is a process that will probably take many centuries, if not a few millennia, but it could be set irreversibly in motion in the coming decades, or as indeed a number of studies have shown last year, we might have already crossed this particular tipping point. This is why when you see, when you look at the uncertainty bar there, it starts off uh, below one degree warming because we're now at about one degree above the pre-industrial level and we may have just passed this tipping point already. That means that the further decay of the West Antarctic ice sheet is now basically programmed in. It happens irreversibly and will raise global sea levels by about three meters in the coming centuries to millennia. Now, why am I talking about tipping points? But you see a kind of white bar there going from this uh, white yellow to red. This is because although there is a very well-defined critical 
tipping point like in a kayak, we don't know exactly where it is. And that's why we have this uncertainty range with going towards the darker yellow, orange, and red colors indicates an increasing risk of having crossed this particular critical threshold. The Greenland ice sheet also has a critical threshold, although the physics is different from the Western Antarctic ice sheet in that uh, the kind of critical feedback that makes the system unstable in Greenland is the so-called ice elevation feedback. That is because the Greenland ice sheet is about 3,000 meters thick. When it gets thinner, because of warming and melting and increased ice flow into the ocean, when it gets thinner, the surface gets lower in the atmosphere. And the lower you get in the atmosphere, the warmer it gets. Anyone who's ever been in the mountains knows that. And so the smaller the Greenland ice sheet gets, the more it gets into warmer air at the surface, the greater the melting. This is a vicious circle and will get rid of the entire Greenland ice sheet over time once we pass that critical tipping point. Now, that critical threshold was thought to be from about two degrees global warming above uh, up to about uh, five degrees. That was what the fourth assessment report of the IPCC said. But unfortunately, further research has shown that that was probably understating the risk. And we now know in the fifth assessment report of the IPCC, that's the latest one, says that this critical threshold, we start uh, a risk of crossing that threshold from about one degree global warming. So from about now, we're getting into that risk territory. And just to remind you, the, the fact that there was thought to be this Greenland threshold somewhere above two degrees warming originally was one of the main reasons for the two degree guardrail of international climate policy. Now that had to be revised down. And so we already are now with every extra uh, little bit of warming that we add, we are increasing the risk of uh, crossing that critical tipping point for the Greenland ice sheet and basically committing the world to the then following seven meters of global sea level rise. Now, another uh, threshold that is kind of within the Paris range uh, of that first group of five on the left-hand side of the diagram is the coral reefs. And in fact, the coral reefs are probably already going to be uh, destroyed after two degrees of warming. And so that is uh, one where it is critical to limit the warming well below two degrees, just like for the Greenland ice sheet where it's uh, it definitely, if we allow warming to two degrees, there's a substantial risk. With the coral reefs, it's a, a very high risk that we will lose them with two degrees of warming. This is also due to the fact that it's not only the warming, but also the ocean acidification coming from the same greenhouse gas, from the same carbon dioxide emissions as global warming. They also threaten the survival of the coral reefs. So if we want to retain some coral reefs, we better try very hard to stop warming at about 1.5 degrees rather than letting it go to two degrees. So if you look further on the right-hand side in the diagram, there are some further critical, critical uh, tipping elements described, including, for example, the Atlantic Ocean circulation, the widely known as the Gulf Stream system, which runs a risk of collapse uh, at higher temperatures, luckily well above uh, the Paris range. But these further tipping elements of the climate system illustrate the increasing risks that we run if we do not implement the Paris Agreement, but allow warming of, say, three degrees or four degrees. On the far right-hand side of the diagram, you see four different temperature levels in four different colors that show at uh, what temperature level we will arrive for four different emission scenarios. And the top one, the, the red one, shows you business as usual warming. That means if we do not implement any climate policies, we will end up at a, a very high global temperature increase, which 
basically threatens to tip all these tipping elements in the climate system, that would be an extremely foolhardy uh, thing to do. It would basically be insane to follow that path and risk a complete transformation of our planet. And then there are two in-between scenarios, but the green one at the bottom, that's the one that we really uh, need to realize, or possibly even somewhat below that, by implementing the Paris Climate Agreement. This chart also shows that we are not in safe territory even if we implement the Paris Climate Agreement because there are several tipping elements that could be uh, tipped even within that range between 1.5 and 2 degrees and possibly, probably even, the West Antarctic ice sheet tipping point has already been crossed, but it is critical to keep warming at a low, as low as possible level in order to prevent further tipping points being crossed and further irreversible large-scale changes in the climate system being triggered that will have a detrimental effect on humanity.